yeah uh, good evening everyone uh, on behalf of the hyderabad branch of sirc of uh, ica i think it's a biggest day of my life where i can really say the galaxy of stars uh, are here with us so uh, rn dash sir ashwini tarneja sir rakesh gupta ji amit uh, kemka ji uh, raj agarwal sumil agarwal and our own dhaniva sharma itne sare stars to ek jagah jama hona i think it's a very proud moment for us i welcome all of you and as well as all the participants uh, to the meeting for this uh, meeting which promises to be one of the best from hyderabad but before i uh, we start the meeting may I request dhaniva sharma to just say a few words and then i introduce uh, uh, ashwin sir and then we start the meeting so dhaniva over to you introduce uh, amit sir amit sir yeah after ek baar dhaniva baat kar lenge thode welcome kar lenge fir main amit sir ko introduce karke start kar deta hu uh pankaj bhai uh, thank you very much and uh, undoubtedly like you it is an excitement for me also to have this uh, you know uh, galaxy of people today a person from a supreme court lawyer who an xit at members then an tmla past chairman and uh, you know uh, people with uh, a beautiful kind of background and if you see today's message which i gave to all the people <coughs> specifically i wrote it is a mahakum if you know what is meaning of mahakum is basically all the people come together and just take the bath in uh, the uh, ganga and try to understand what it is and the beauty about all the two three days uh, sessions has been great and now this is a consolidating session rather i can say with regards to uh, you know the entire activity which has happened in last three days and uh, pankaj bhai uh, the kind of uh, experience you also have received multiple messages i have received multiple messages for the kind of uh, program what we have got it done because this is the first time ever a series of four uh, continuing uh, lectures have happened and particularly in the this series uh, after the covid uh, time was over and now during the working days we have got these all people and uh, most important part is every day there have been people uh, you know looking at and lot of people have requested me that there uh, there was a good session yesterday day before yesterday and the day before can we get the video link of all this thing i said yes we are doing a recording of all these sessions and we'll surely be putting in our hyderabad site uh, pankaj bhai i think uh, yes, the, yes yes already already two are done santosh is on job i was sitting on that only today fantastic fantastic i think that is something which we need to share this experience with all our uh, you know uh, members across and uh, I, i think today we have got people from different cities and towns also though people know that ici guidelines have a different uh, logic in the entire thing but learning doesn't stop it doesn't have any boundaries to a state city town and all when you have a right people uh, i was just delivering a lecture the other day i remind i was reminded and i was delivering a lecture saying that you know our life has become like ekalavya where we are able to sit in one particular corner that the guru teaches or not but primarily the education is getting disseminated across the country across the times and this sessions also are going in such beautiful manner and yesterday like you know i immediate past is yesterday and yesterday session rakesh ji to matlab dho diye that is the only word which i can uh, <laughs> i can only have remember is like you know whether it is vikra virat kohli or should i think about uh, yuvraj singh who hit six sixes so considering that uh, you know uh, this has been a great journey i think all the speakers are there i would not like to take more time i would like to conclude my uh, statement here and let us start the session i think uh, we are almost at 6:10 and another couple of minutes uh, amit ji is going to speak he is again a wonderful person what more to say pankaj bhai when a person has a guts to stand in a supreme court uh, and argue cases uh, how can be a different parlor just imagine the quality of uh, you know uh, uh, deliberation which is going to be there today we are really fortunate to have all these people uh, one after another and uh, it's been a you know 
आई एम थैंकफुल टू अश्विनी जी फॉर पर्टिकुलरली दैट ही इज इतनी इतना प्यार बरसाए हैं हैदराबाद पर कि आप ये सब लोगों को हम लोगों के लिए लेकर आए एंड वी आर एबल टू रियली एंजॉय द बेनिफिट ऑफ ऑल दिस लेक्चर्स थैंक यू वेरी मच अश्विनी जी एंड थैंक यू ऑल फॉर बींग देयर दो आई एम गोइंग टू सिट सिट हियर एंड लिसन टू टूडे सेशन बिकॉज इट्स गोइंग टू बी द महाकुम आई के नॉट मिस दो आई एम नॉट वेल आई एम स्टिल interested to listen to the entire discussion pankaj bhai over to you thank you very much thank you very much dev bhai i once again welcome uh, all of you to uh, to today's session see first thing is uh, for the first hour or so shri amit singh uh, khemka ji would be uh, talking on handling of offences and prosecution under fema pmla income tax benami law black money act and companies act and after uh, amit sir speaks then we are going to have a panel discussions where all the uh, galaxy of stars whom you are seeing on the screen are available and for the first time uh, look at the confidence of people, uh, people out here look at the knowledge of the people they say any question any question on income tax fema pmla benami la black money act companies act पूछो तुम लोग एंड वी आर रेडी टू आंसर सो आई थिंक हैट्स ऑफ टू दैट नॉलेज बट आई विल क्विकली इंट्रोड्यूस श्री अमित खेमका जी बिफोर आई इनवाइट हिम टू टॉक मिस्टर अमित खेमका इज एन लिटिगेशन लॉयर विद एन एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ ऑलमोस्ट 36 सिक्स ईयर्स एट द बार ही हैज हैंडल्ड लार्ज नंबर ऑफ केसेस इन्वॉल्विंग कॉम्प्लेक्स इश्यूज इन द डोमेन्स ऑफ क्रिमिनल सिविल एंड कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन लॉज केसेस हैंडल्ड बाय हिम have made a significant impact uh, legally and socially he has a large client list including corporates professionals public servants and politicians for his legal occupation uh, he is regularly invited to all india radio and various tv channels and has participated in about 400 debates on all india radio and about 1000 debates on tv on a diverse legal subjects he has addressed the standing committee of parliament and regularly delivers lectures at different forums including the chartered accountants lawyers and students he has held various <laughs> posts in number of ngos and lawyers association he has been bestowed with various awards and recognitions by a number of organizations for his legal acumen and service to the masses i present before you shri amit khemka ji Uh, one of the excellent persons uh, ever interacted in this see amit khemka ji for you sir over to you good day thank you pankaj ji for the kind words uh, thank you daya bhai to make it uh, all happen uh, with the help and cooperation of pankaj ji and ashwini ji uh, it is uh, you know i we i was last year with uh, ashwini ji i was in hyderabad and uh, we had delivered a lecture there uh, the best thing which i found about hyderabad people was that everybody i mean there was absolutely no air like in delhi or in north in north india you will find everybody kind of showing off you know but there even the senior most person or even a very big man he was very very simple so i really salute the simplicity of the people of hyderabad and andhra pradesh uh, in fact uh, i have uh, a friend of mine there who has just retired as district judge uh, he you know he came at the airport and he left he was ready to leave us at the airport you know so i said baba you are so such a busy person but they he and his wife he was they were together with us all through the time so that we cannot even imagine in delhi you know we can't just think that we can be so hospitable to everybody so really uh, it was a pleasure and it is today a pleasure it is it has been a pleasure for last four days so thank you so much from our heart and uh, maybe i i wish that whatever uh we are going to say today it is of some use to uh, the people i am conscious that i am addressing 
the masters of fiscal laws the masters of his economic laws who are themselves the masters and i am trying to or we are trying to say something in front of them uh, maybe i mean we are daring too much but uh, uh, still uh, we will try to do something i mean even if 2 minutes of what i say is of any use to somebody i'll think that our effort has been uh, has uh, has succeeded you know so thank you so much and i'm coming to the topic uh friends uh you are all aware that last three decades have been really uh very very different decades for this country we saw in 90s the onset of liberalization we were told that there will be lesser laws now we were told there will be no license permit raj we were told that there would be no controls left and people will have ease of doing business but as the liberalization took place as the people were given free hand more and more people tried to take benefit of that liberalization or that liberalized regime and the result was that the gov successive governments had to come up with laws which tried to control or which tried to plug those loopholes which were being taken benefit of by the people who wanted to do financial wrongs or the fiscal wrongs and you have seen a large number of laws coming in especially in last two decades whether it is pmla or benami or black money act or uh, i mean the whole new companies law which has changed the complete shape of company law you know the provisions are totally different than various uh, sebi provisions in fact if you see the fema it was supposed to be fema was brought on the pretext that uh, fera would be given uh, given up because it had criminal prosecution provisions and fera was repealed and fema was brought and or no offense of uh, and for the foreign exchange was made criminal i mean it was it was all wherever there was a wrong in respect of foreign exchange the fema contemplated that it will only be met by penalties or uh, fines but it will not be prosec nobody will be prosecuted for it it was at that pretext fema was brought but very recently even in fema they have introduced now a provision which is uh, which is uh, which contemplates a prosecution then they had to bring in uh, notifications by making fema uh, the foreign currency as a as as a product so if anybody was trying to export or import the foreign currency which uh, is more than the allowed limit then it was treated as contraband and therefore the customs law was brought in so it became an offense under 135 of customs act if somebody was bringing in or taking out the foreign currency so look at the whole the complete circle kind of a thing which is happening that something which was given up way just 20 years ago and now the because the people have tried to take benefits of the low loopholes stricter regimes had to be brought in again and the result is also that there are a huge and very serious uh, prosecution provisions in most of the laws which we are talking of and not only that that there are uh, provisions of which prosecute but the burden of proof has also been shifted on the accused which is against the whole hypothesis of uh, the crime or on an offense that the bird the it is the prosecution which must stand on its own legs so all these problems have arisen that all these fiscal laws the burden of proof has been shifted then all of them have bearing on each other you can't say today that an income tax violation or income tax uh, uh, 
if a person is doing a wrong where he was only trying to uh, evade the tax will not result in his prosecution in any other law as well so it has become necessary for the especially the chartered accountants who are the masters of fiscal laws who are the, who are you know eating drinking living every time they are doing but they are into finance only they are into fiscal laws only so these are though you are the people who need to at least have a fair idea about this interplay and of these laws so i will try to just start with uh, if i may if i am allowed to say your own income tax act now that income tax act the which you live every day you you know have i mean basically uh, you can't even think of your life without income tax act so that is the act which also contains very serious provisions for prosecution so i will begin with a little overview of the provisions under the income tax act and then i will take you to the other uh, laws and uh, the prosecutions in the other acts as well and will try to uh, deal with certain uh, certain issues uh, connected there with so i'll just share my screen uh, i hope it is uh, visible to all of you uh, only blank uh, thing is coming sir uh, it's a white screen as of now no can can you not see now it's only a very plain uh, ppt oh no पहले आप एक बार पीपीटी खोल लीजिए फिर करके पावर पॉइंट दे लीजिए आ जाएगा मैं करता हूं ट्राइड इट अर्लियर सर स्क्रीन स्क्रीन करके शेयर स्क्रीन करने के बाद क्लिक दैट स्क्रीन व्हिच इज गोइंग टू बी देयर ऑन योर दिस थिंग can you see it now no yes, sir abhi ab ab aap share screen karke us pe click kijiye okay oh i had okay okay i'm sorry actually wo relevant wala push aa gaya aa gaya sir aa gaya ab now we can see sir now we can see thank you thank you so much uh so friends uh chapter 22 of income tax act deals with the offenses so there are uh, you know there are some offenses which are meant to facilitate the regulatory mechanism like for example if an officer has to search or a, during that search certain restraint orders are issued uh, for example that uh, a, there is a costly item like a painting which cannot be taken away uh, by the officers then a restraint order has been passed in respect thereof or the uh, you know for example for overnight the search could not be completed and it is to be completed it has to be continued the next day and an order has been passed that the safe will not be opened or almira will not be opened or something like that then in that case if these kind of orders are violated then it has been made punishable similarly if the officers require the facilities during the search and those facilities are not given or not are the it is the ssc doesn't cooperate with the officers then in that case that also has been made punishable uh, under the law now friends uh, these are the uh, these are the offenses these are the offenses for which we don't really get many cases however they are kind of made so that nobody takes the uh, orders of the officers lightly and uh, uh, hardly any cases are uh, received under these uh, sections and uh, these are the offenses which are not even compoundable now under 275b whenever uh, the order which we are i mean the facility which we are talking of the facility is for example a computer is there during the search they want the password of the computer now it is on the duty of the ssc to uh, provide or the person searched 
to provide the password of that uh, computer and uh, uh, if that is not given that person may uh, exposes himself and he can be pun prosecuted for that <clears throat> this issue was uh, uh, you know was uh, came up before delhi high court in sr patli boy and company versus department of income tax where the court said that uh, and before 275b can be invoked a notice under section 132 is a must i mean the orders should be given by way of writing in a by way of a notice and the they also uh, because it was a matter where the uh, this particular law firm the sr bartley boy the data firm they said that the computer contains the data of many other clients and it is not only one ssc in respect of whom the search was taking place and therefore they refused to share the password of the computers uh, seized by the uh, department so the court high court said that they were entitled to say that we will only provide the data of the concerned ssc only and we will not give the data but when the matter went to supreme court the supreme court kept this question of law open and allowed the department to inspect and look for the data look for the data related to the client to the ssc in respect of which the search was taking place so the question is still remains open however till then the, this is the uh, this is the law as uh, held by the high court then friends uh, 276 if uh, any property is fraudulently removed or concealed or transferred for the uh, to avoid the execution of a certificate under the law then also it also makes it punishable so the kind of a uh, section i mean provision then uh, you have the offense related to the tds and the tax payable under 1150 and 1184 b now it is the but the offense is that failure to pay or deposit the it is not the offense that if a person is has not failed to deduct the tds it is only that he deducts and does not deposit it with the government so that also has an element of kind of misappropriation or breach of trust if i may say so and for that a person is uh, liable to be prosecuted then also there is 276 bb which uh, uh, which makes tax collected uh, has not be, is not paid then that is also punishable with 7 uh, uh, years of imprisonment and 3 months there which is minimum of 3 months a question uh, comes to the mind whether delay in deposit of tds also attracts prosecution as i told you that it is not the deduction which is prosecute i mean not deducting the tds does is not prosecutable but even the delay in deposition of tax is prosecutable that you even if you a person has kept it with him then the delay is a person can be prosecuted for that now uh, last year the cbdt has come out with the guidelines with the instructions by in the which they have said that if the delay is up to 60 days then in that case and the amount of tax is up to 25 lakhs then in that case the prosecution should not be normally launched in fact this is the this is one section in which the maximum number of prosecution cases are filed and which is central to the whole scheme of the income tax act now it deals with section 276c1 deals with evasion to evasion of tax penalty or interest while uh, 276c2 deals with evading to pay the tax so friends uh, evasion of tax there is an explanation in this section which explains as to what evasion of tax would i mean what would be included in the evasion of tax <laughs> now it talks of that if a, if the book there are any false entries in the books or documents 
there are any false uh, uh, if there are any omissions in the or the if there is an omission of a relevant entry or there is any other circumstances which enables a person to evade the tax now if you please see that this is a section where uh, i mean uh, penalties are for for these kind of things only there are various penalties prescribed under the law however the making itself of a false document if you go to ipc then it becomes a forgery so department can actually launch prosecution and in some cases they do under 276c for evasion of tax together with where there is a false or fabricated document where the suppose there is a false bill which has been uh, used for claiming uh, any kind of benefit uh, or to evade the tax then in that case the sections of ips connected with forgery can also be attracted and the prosecution can be launched together with that however 276c2 comes into effect only when there is a there is a crystallized liability there when there is either self by way of self assessment or by way of any assessment order which has been passed so it is only evasion to pay the tax while 276c1 deals with the evasion of tax per se a question comes to the mind that whether the assessing officer has to wait till the completion of the assessment for initiating the prosecution under this section in fact 276c1 and 2 are two different offenses so uh, for 276c1 prosecution can be proposed or initiated even before the completion of the assessment proceedings however in respect of subsection 2 that is the evasion to pay tax then in that case the prosecution can only be launched once there is some kind of an assessment and the tax penalty or interest has become due however friends uh, in the la in last year only the cbdt has come up with the directions with the uh, instructions that prosecution under section 276 c1 should not be launched till the finalization of the of the uh, liability by the itat so uh, this law which uh, which was for over the years which was developed in the supreme court that the prosecution under could be launched even before the uh, even before the assessment proceedings were complete or penalty proceedings were complete then uh, that law has been given a pause by the cbdt and now under 276 c1 no prosecution can be launched till the matter reaches the matter is finalized at the stage of itat however for two subsection 2 if the assessment is complete and no stay has been granted in the appeal the prosecution can st still be launched for evasion to pay the tax there are identical sections to this identical section to this particular section in black money act also which deals with the uh, 511 deals with evasion of tax uh, in respect of the uh, in respect of the assets uh, i mean um, where wherever in res in respect of the assets or income which is covered under the black money act or and subsection 2 of the same section deals with the evasion to pay the tax and how while the instruction of the cbdt in respect of 276c1 does not apply to 51 so the law which has been held over the years by the supreme court that the prosecution under section 51 one can be launched even when the uh, the penalty proceedings under the black money act are pending so this prosecution can always be launched even while the proceedings are for penalty are pending and 
likewise for subsection 2 the proceedings can only be launched once the penalty and or the tax becomes crystallized then friends uh, failure to furnish returns of income now uh, there is an exception to that and the failure to furnish if the return is furnished before the expiry of the assessment year and the tax after giving adjustment of advance tax and the tds uh, the liability does not exceed rupees 10000 then in that case the prosecution is not to be launched however uh, in all other cases they are almost treated alike uh, if it is more than uh, 20, if it is less than 25 lakh the tax evaded is more less than 25 lakhs then the punishment is up to 3 months uh, up to 3 years and with minimum punishment of 3 months however if it is more than 25 lakhs the minimum punishment is 6 months and it is it can go up to 7 years there is a, a in a black money act also there is a section where the failure to furnish return in respect of the assets located outside india as a beneficial owner or otherwise has also been made punishable friends here let me draw your attention to the fact that so far as section 49 is concerned it makes punishable not file furnishing the return in respect of the income and foreign income and asset and section 50 deals with of the black money act deals with the were not failure to furnish in the return of income any information about the asset including the financial interest in entity located outside india so so far as section 40 and 50 are concerned even if a person even if there is the whole all of all the assets are disclosed or they can be explained and even if the income is explainable then also just the fact that in the previous year concern the income or the asset was not disclosed that itself has been made punishable under section 49 and 50 it does not require any kind of evasion of tax or any i mean it is not necessary that there should be any benefit which must have been derived by the person concerned so there is no requirement of any uh, uh, any kind of gain which that person might have taken however there is an element of uh, willful i mean uh, mens rea here that it should be the uh, it should be willful failure for uh, not for furnishing the returns or not furnishing the information Uh, i will deal with uh, this aspect of uh, culpable mental state that if you will uh, notice that all these sections uh, i mean uh, dealing with the evasion of tax or evasion of payment of tax or not or furnishing the not non furnishing the return all most of them have the words like fraudulently or willfully or knowingly now that indicates that for these offenses a mental state is required the culpable mental state is required so i'll deal with it a little later then friends uh, 276d deals with if there is uh, any notice served asking for any accounts or documents under subsection 1 of section 142 then in that case if that is if there is a failure then also it is punishable then this is yet another section in which the maximum number of prosecutions are received section 277 of income tax act false statement in verification so whoever makes a statement in verification which is uh, or delivers an account or a statement which is false uh, he is also punishable with uh, up to 7 years and with minimum punishment of 3 months depending on how much uh, tax was evaded uh, by that now uh, if i may just uh, point out if i may just uh, draw your attention to the fact as to what is this verification statement and verification now a statement and verification if you will recollect 
every uh, return which is filed contains a verification so if the return the contents of the return are wrong then that verification becomes wrong that verification becomes false similarly account or statement which is given if that is false then that is also punishable under this law an identical section is there in black money act as well then abetment of course almost every uh, act or every law dealing with the abetment of uh, with any offenses contains this section which uh, deals with the abetment of the offense by any person i mean uh, if uh, 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 i mean the government or the machinery thinks that lawyers and chartered accountants do help out people in uh, doing the wrongs in fact even the prime minister came out with up I in mean, sorry even uh, the many ministers or prime ministers keep saying that so there is a chance that uh, in some cases this kind of provision can be utilized against the chartered accountants and lawyers also in fact in pmla prosecutions which we see there are uh, almost in 50% of the cases there is some lawyer or chartered accountant or company secretary has been made a co accused although most of them have done nothing which is active which can be even said actively involved or knowingly there but they are they have been uh, implicated so uh, then uh, punishment for abetment is there in black money act as well uh, friends a um, uh, question comes to the at when article 22 of the constitution says that no person shall be prosecuted and punished for the same offense more than once then when a penalty has been already levied for the wrong under the law on a person and penalty by its by by its terminology itself talks of penal consequences once a person has already been punished by penal consequences then why should he be prosecuted for the same offense for the on the same facts for the same cause again this question came before the supreme court in way back in 1953 and the court said that the penalty proceedings cannot be that was the first uh, uh, judgment in this sequence and it was a constitution bench the court said the penalty proceedings cannot be equated with the prosecution for a criminal offense the authorities adjudicating the levy or the of the penalty are not courts and therefore uh, the court also said that the degree of uh, evidence which is required is much higher in the case of criminal offenses and therefore uh it cannot be said that it is a case hit by article 20 of the constitution it is very necessary that uh, we understand as to what is the relationship between the prosecution and the uh, penalty proceedings now first thing which comes to the mind is whether the prosecution can be initiated before the conclusion of the penalty proceedings as i have already discussed it earlier that the these are two different proceedings and they can be launched simultaneously however as i have told you that by way of instructions of cbdt now uh, the prosecution only under 276c1 cannot be launched till the till the proceeding till the liability is uh, finalized by the itat uh, another question is that if the penalty proceedings fail then can the uh, can the prosecution continue uh, this this whole law was crystallized in the judgment of radhesham kejriwal where the supreme court held that number one they are independent of each other they can be launched simultaneously decision in adjudicating education proceedings is not necessary before initiating the criminal prosecution findings in the adjudication not binding in the proceedings for criminal prosecution exoneration in adjudication proceeding on technical ground and not on merit the prosecution may continue however 
if the exoneration is on merits then the criminal prosecution cannot be allowed to continue as you require even a higher proof standard of proof in the criminal prosecution than the penalty proceedings if no penalty proceedings were initiated can the prosecution be launched non initiated it can be non initiation penalty proceeding does not lead to presumption that the prosecution cannot be initiated now friends let us understand that is there or can there be any relationship between the offenses under pmla or and income tax act although very lucidly in last uh, uh, in uh, three days uh, you have been uh, given the uh, by especially by ashwini ji in last two days he showed you that the interconnection and interplay of different laws and he showed you how one wrong uh, which apparently looks like a very innocuous wrong how it becomes a wrong in uh, or in many other laws uh, however i'll just point out because i'll not waste your time on the definition of money laundering or the definition of proceeds of crime uh, i'll straight away come to the connection of income tax law or income tax wrongs with that of the pmla uh, since section 51 of black money act is a scheduled offense so therefore any evasion of tax in respect of uh, the foreign assets or income uh, is punishable under section 51 of black money act and therefore it being a scheduled offense it also attracts the provisions of pmla similarly as i when when i were discussing 276c1 and the definition of evasion of tax and what what will constitute what may constitute as evasion of tax i had uh, uh, drawn your attention to the documents which are false or false entries or uh, the you know so it will amount to playing a fraud on the exchequer or on the government so fraud is covered the cheating is covered under section 417 to 420 ipc which is uh, which is also a scheduled offense similarly if it is a company almost i mean a large number of acts come within the definition of fraudulent acts and which are covered under section 447 of companies act and 447 of companies act is also a scheduled offense then any false or forged document as the definition explanation in 276c1 say talks about false entries in the statement of account false documents omissions concealments and all of them will be covered in section 467 471 472 and 473 of ipc which again are the scheduled offenses then if any public servant is involved uh, then prevention of corruption act will come in and prevention of corruption act uh, is all one of the offenses of prevention of corruption act is also a scheduled offense then in that case also the offense of money laundering will come in i'll uh, i have already explained to you that any false document or false electronic record on the part of or a part of a document or electronic record with the intent to cause damage or injury to the public or to any person to support any claim or title or to cause any person to part with the property is uh, is come is uh, uh, you know with the intent to commit fraud may commits forgery so this is the definition of forgery my friends and which squarely covers the acts which have been made uh, you know which are which which are given in the explanation to 276 c1 and 471 being uh, uh, the uh, a, a scheduled offense under pmla uh, all these acts which are you you which are done in order to evade the tax it they may constitute forgery and they may also attract the provisions of prevention of money laundering act then friends uh, uh, ashwini ji has already dealt with 
uh, in detail with the uh, burden of proof uh, aspect. In fact, I was part of that uh, the day before yesterday. Uh, and uh, we understand that in all these laws, the provisions have been made, which have shifted the burden of proof on the accused, which is against the time tested principle that the prosecution must stand or fall in on its own legs. It cannot derive strength from the weakness of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the defense. Now friends, uh, uh, as we had explained that uh, under section 24 of PMLA, the burden of proof has been shifted on the accused. But that burden is only a partial burden which has been shifted. The burden to prove that a scheduled offense had taken place, burden to prove that that scheduled offense generated proceeds of crime, and burden to prove that these are the very proceeds of crime which are involved in the money laundering on the, on the prosecution. The only presumption which can be drawn is that the, those proceeds of crime were involved in money laundering that is the only presumption which can be drawn. However, a lot of uh, confusion was created uh, by the case of uh, B. Ramaraju, where it was said that it is on the, on the accused to prove that the proceeds of crime are untainted property. It is because of this section which existed prior to the amendment of section 24. In fact, 24 was totally substituted as uh, with in 2013 as effective from 14th of February 2013. So it earlier said that when a person is accused of having committed the offense of money laundering under section 3, the burden to prove that the proceeds of crime are untainted. So what was to be proved at that time was that the proceeds of crime involved are not the proceeds of crime. Now that situation has been completely changed now after this substituted section 24. That, sub, that earlier word untainted has completely gone. And today it is only what is to be proved by, by the accused is only that the proceeds of crime were not involved in money laundering. He did not try to launder the proceeds of crime. Uh, in uh, Delhi High Court, in case of Upendra Rai, said that the state stage of raising the presumption or for accused to rebut the said presumption would be during the course of trial. And they said that even if at the stage of bail he was to rebut that presumption, it will be only based on the broad probability, that the preponderance of probability, and not beyond doubt. <coughs> then friends, in Black Money Act and also in Income Tax Act, there is a reverse burden. This is, if I may say, is even more serious than the reverse burden in, under the PMLA. It talks of the culpable mental state. It says that wherever the, there is a requirement of culpable mental state, wherever the department has to prove that the offense was committed willfully or fraudulently or knowingly, then in that mental state shall be presumed. But it shall be a defense for the accused to prove that he had no such mental state. So the offense, the so far as the mental state is concerned, it will be proved. The accused can prove that there was no, I mean, for example, he can say that it was, I had not done it willfully. He can say that there was no fraud involved. But how he has to prove? He has to prove it true. But he cannot prove it by preponderance of probability. The subsection 2 of the section says the fact is said to be proved only when the court believes it to exist beyond reasonable doubt. You know, we have learned, we have grown, learned, I mean, being told that 
the prosecution has to prove the offense beyond reasonable doubt however in two in these sections 278e and uh, you know sec i mean the presumption of mental state it is the accused it is the person charged who has to prove that he did not possess any such culpable mental state to beyond reasonable doubt and just not by it will not be enough that if he proves it by uh, preponderance of probabilities so and it was uh, it was in sasi enterprises the supreme court of india has uh, clearly said that such a defense has to be proved beyond reasonable doubt then friends uh, proof of entries in the records or documents uh, for the convenience of the department it has uh, a law has been made that only the copies can be filed with the uh, by the departmental officers just attesting that uh, these are the copies of the original entries or original documents in the records of the department and they need not because otherwise in all the cases in the trials all the originals are brought before the court and then only the copies are proved but 279b of the income tax act allows the department there is a similar provision uh, in black money act and now there is a similar provision inserted into uh, pvpt prohibition of binami property act also so uh, so far as binami prop definition as sector is concerned no one can uh, explain that better than ashwini ji which you people already had the benefit of however uh, so far as prosecution is concerned he uh, must have taken you to the prosecution also uh, just to recapitulate in section 3 of binami pbpt act where uh, whoever enters into the binami transaction Uh, that is up to the up to 1 11 whatever transactions had taken place those were punishable under the old act with 3 years or fine and what was the incidence which uh, which was what was the cause of action for prosecution is the entering into a binami transaction while the attach for attachment they one has to hold the binami property but for but for the prosecution it is the entering into the binami transaction however often the after 111 2016 whatever binami transactions have taken place they can only be prosecuted under section 53 of pbpt act now uh, while section 3 in section 3 there are no riders but in section 53 of pvpt act there are only three conditions prescribed for uh, three kinds of binami transactions if i may say so where the prosecution can be launched now uh, again here the incidence will be the cause of action will arise only with respect to entering into a binami transaction what are the three condi- three uh, three position three uh, conditions number 1 if it has been made in order to defeat the provision of any law or it has been made to avoid payment of statutory duties or to avoid payment of creditors so uh, these are the only three conditions in which the prosecution can be launched under the pb for benami transaction then all these offenses uh, under pppt act under uh, you know under black money act income tax act uh, they require sanction of uh, the the authorities prescribed in case of pppt it used to be the sanction of the board but now the that has been changed and uh, the competent authority the board has already been substituted with the uh, principal commissioner commissioner or director you know as uh, and in under income tax all act also uh, the prosecutions have to be launched 
with the uh, with the sanction of these officers now friends uh, we all know that uh, sanction is not merely a formality the, the there is a huge uh, chapter of sanction itself as to what how the sanction should be given what all is to be done by the uh, by the sanctioning authority when the sanction is without application of mind when the sanction is bad all those things is a subject matter of uh, one independent uh, uh, lecture you know so i'll just skip that then uh, uh, one question i will certainly deal with here is that whether any show cause notice is required to be given before initiation of the prosecution proceedings now friends uh, before i do that let me also clarify that under pmla under the prevention of money laundering act there is no sanction required it is only under black money act the pro, the income tax act and the pbpt that the sanction is required but not under the pmla so far as giving of show cause notices concern uh, the laws the court says the supreme court says that there is no right to show cause notice there is a I mean, it is not as a matter of right that you deserve to get the show cause notice. However, the department has been issuing the show cause notices invariably for grant of sanction. So I feel that this is the stage where uh, where the everything about the strategy has to be made about uh, how to deal with the prosecution. And as uh, a lawyer who has to handle the prosecution ultimately uh, is required so i feel a team uh, kind of a should be formed a chartered accountant and a lawyer should start working in tandem at this stage and uh, as i always tell people that look it is your baby it is the baby of the chartered accountants and uh, mostly after this stage chartered accountants start thinking that they have got nothing to do with this matter because now it will be handled by the by the concerned lawyer but i let me tell you with my own experience uh, in this field that the involvement of chartered accountant ashwini has been uh, again and again stressing upon that that the involvement of the chartered accountant should continue even till the till the um, uh, whole proceeding or whole prosecution uh, culminates because uh it, it you know all the facts you know the whole law the law you know the law by heart uh, the prosecution lawyer the defense lawyer only knows the part of it he only knows how to handle the prosecution but he does not know the substantive law of income tax he doesn't he may he may fault up there and he after all the fiscal law is your domain so your involvement must continue till the culmination of the proceedings and this is also the stage and i would say it is good luck of the people that departments are sending notice although they are the uh, departmental officers want to use the sending of the notice as as a methodology to dig out more information uh, so that they can plug the loopholes during the prosecution so one has to think as to what is it what should be there in the uh, note in the reply to the show cause notice what should not be there in the reply to show cause notice so whole strategy has to be formed at this stage uh, then friends uh, under the income tax act only the uh, offenses are compoundable and uh, however uh, now uh, there are certain certain offenses have been made non compoundable by way of cbdt circulars which i would say is beyond this but the powers uh, beyond the contemplation of this particular provision which says that either before or after the institution of the proceedings the offenses can be compounded so uh, i don't know i mean uh, whenever an appropriate case will come probably that direction where certain offenses have been made non compoundable can be maybe it will be challenged then also the department has come out with a limitation period the limitation starts from that on the date when the complaint the prosecution complaint is filed in the 
before the court. So uh, there can be a case where the prosecution, uh, it may not come to the notice of the accused and within one year the, he has to apply for the compounding. So uh, I don't know, I mean that limitation is also not prescribed under the law. So whether it can be added by the CBDT, I have my doubts on that. Then, friends, uh, almost all these laws have make, uh, you know, uh, it is the uh, law that the vicarious liability only extends to the civil wrongs. Now, vicarious liability does not extend to uh, the criminal laws. But uh, in case of companies, most uh, laws which make uh, uh, make the acts of the company punishable or prosec uh, make uh, where the offense is committed by the company, then in that case, the laws make it, in fact, I am not going into the distinction on this, but these are the main uh, uh, ingredients of an almost every law that every person, the company has to be prosecuted, then every person who is in charge of and responsible to the company for the conduct of its business at the time of the contravention was committed, then director, manager, secretary, or other officers who consented or connived or neglected, then they are also responsible and they are also to be prosecuted together with the company. Now, uh, a, a question was raised in the case of Anita Arda that company was not arrayed as accused. It was only the, only the directors which were arrayed as the accused. The Supreme Court said that without arraying company as, a, as an accused, the prosecution complaint or prosecution has, is bound to fail because it is the company which is the primary uh, primary uh, accused and it is only by way of vicarious liability that these uh, people by the by the fiction of law they have been made responsible for the acts of the company and therefore the, if the company has not been arrayed as an accused then only directors alone cannot be uh, prosecuted and the, com the complaint was quashed by the uh, Supreme Court. Then, friends, uh, in a, 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 the Supreme Court also considered the question that whether, where, like for example, I had just shown you certain offenses where there is a minimum uh, imprisonment prescribed, like three months or six months of imprisonment is prescribed. Now, company cannot be imprisoned. So, what if that is the position? Then, can the prosecution continue in respect of the company? The court said, yes, it will not be imprisoned. Its directors or the people who were responsible will be imprisoned. However, the company, the fine will be imposed on the company. So this is what the Supreme Court said in the ANZ decisions Lebanon. Then friends, all these prosecutions in the PMLA, PVPT, Black Money Act, they are, they commence with a complaint before respective special courts, all these laws prescribed for special courts. Then uh, in all these prosecutions, the provisions of criminal procedure code are, code are applicable. Uh, in the normal course, when the complaint is filed, the statement of, of the complainant is taken on oath by the magistrate. However, as in these cases, the it is the, the complainant is a public servant, the magistrate can exempt the recording of his statement on oath at that stage. After the complaint is filed, the magistrate may issue summons or warrants. Uh, the complaint must be accompanied with a list of witnesses. The Whenever a summon or warrant is issued, it should be accompanied with a copy of such complaint together with the annexures. So whenever a client calls you up and says that I've received a summon from the court, please ask him to write while receiving the summon that how many number of pages he has received together with the summon. Because he may not know as to what, whether the copy of received by him is complete or not. 
then uh, people uh, our summons which are very deceptive in nature so a person may think that it is merely a summons and he may go there but the court even in the case non available offenses the magistrate is entitled to in of course in case of non available uh, non available offenses uh, the bail application has to be filed and the case has to be made out for grant of bail however where the cases are available even there the magistrate may require the accused to furnish a security bond to give, with or without sureties so he has to be ready which which we in the normal parlance call bail you know so he has to be ready to furnish the bail bond with or without sureties on the very first day now accused has to be present on every date of hearing however the magistrate can dispense with it is easy to get uh, exemption for one or two hearings but uh, when it comes to permanent exemption it is very rarely granted only in the cases of old or infirm people or sick people it is hardly in those cases that permanent exemption is granted uh, we have to write in the very beginning the mind has to be applied that uh, whether the sanction and summoning order were uh, are proper whether we have to challenge the sanction whether we have to challenge the summoning order all these uh, all the mind has to be applied at right at this stage because we may challenge it under uh, revision or we may file a questioning petition or we may wait till the framing of charges you know so these are uh, the stages when immediately on receipt of the summons the lawyer uh, has to be involved and uh, we have to make as form a strategy uh, so friends that was uh, uh, i tried to finish it according to the time allotted still i have crossed i think 3 uh, 4 5 minutes more so uh, thank you pankaj bhai that was it and we will now take uh, the questions together yeah, thank you very much amit kim uh, amit sir because uh, the complex topics was covered in a very lucid manner by you and uh, frankly we definitely look forward to have uh, more such sessions from you but without wasting time of anyone there by now uh, i will hand over the reins of captainship to our regular captain ashwin tarneja ji and uh, you can say, sir the stadium is all yours uh, you can just take the questions are there in between if some questions are coming i'll just direct the people to put it in q and a so all yours ashwin sir uh, please take care take over thank you thank you pankaj ji i must compliment amit ji because i have seen amit ji in the courts whenever the judge would say ki uh, mr khemka uh, we have only 10 minutes you have to explain me this case in 10 minutes only so successfully and very efficiently he explains the case in 10 minutes so i think very lucidly amit ji has explained various prosecution provisions which we chartered accountants at time uh, must know to help our clients but because of our lack of knowledge then he has to depend upon others because we become his family consultant so basic provisions uh, are we are aware about at least we can give him a first aid kind of uh, relief which is sometimes very very handy and very very useful so thank you very much amiti and uh, i must uh, take this privilege of uh, introducing in my way the the, the panel the unique panel uh, which uh, we are privileged to have today here and so that why i am giving this introduction again so that the our participants our professional brothers and sisters can accordingly modulate their questions and uh, take the benefit of the presence of the panel over here so firstly as you know dr r n dash is with us he has been past chairman of the pmla tribunal and before that he was chief commissioner of income tax so we can take the benefit of his rich experience and now he is practicing as lawyer this field only so we can take the benefit of his rich experience then we have dr raj agarwal dr raj agarwal has authored a book on uh, search and seizure along with dr gupta and also on uh, capital uh, gain uh, 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 book on real estate transactions where in complex issues arising under transfer properties have been uh, in with uh, in simple language at great length and then we have dr rakesh gupta uh, you have heard him yesterday many queries with regard to penalty provisions or with regard to income tax integrations in any manner we can put before him today then we have uh, mr sunil shah 
Sunil ji is from Bombay. Sunil ji has uh, uh, handled, I think, more than uh, un uncountable number of searches all over India. So, any practical issue arising in how to face search, how to represent, I think Sunil ji can be of great help to us. Then we have young, dynamic, upcoming chartered accountants, Sumil Agarwal. And uh, he has very good taste in international taxation and few other areas. So I think uh, we can take the benefit of this entire panel. But as I, we had promised you that we will be taking up firstly those questions which were left uh, unanswered in session number one or session number two or session number three. So beginning with, I think with your permission, let's begin with the unanswered questions of session number one. That is on Benami law. And uh, I will start on that. I will try to answer those questions. And if anybody else from the panel would like to add anything on that, uh, most of uh, all of you are most welcome for the benefit of full benefit of the audience here. So, uh, could you please allow me share screen, uh, Pankaji? Sir, share screen option is given to all the hosts, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, one request, sir. One yes, request sir. is yeah. basically. You uh, have not, uh, Ashwini ji, you have not uh, introduced one more panelist, that is uh, Daya Bhai. Are, yes. Sir, I am not panelist, no, I am listening. <laughs> he is also an expert of uh, prevention of money laundering law. He yes, gives sir. lectures on that. Uh, how yes, can sir. you forget that? I, he also I, will have to come to our rescue wherever we will be uh, you know, faltering. No, sir, actually, I, actually the entire brain behind this show is Daya Bhai. Uh, today he has become the thread in the entire garland. So <laughs> it is because of him only and joint efforts of Pankaji and the entire team. Probably we are here together to have the, you know, this privilege of addressing our brothers and sisters in Hyderabad. So all thanks to you, sir. Yeah, then Danny, I, uh, uh, Ashwini, sir. Quite the co-expert of money laundering, uh, Dhanivar Sharma ji, welcome. Thank you, thank you, Pankaj bhai. But only thing is, I have not delivered PMLA lectures in Hyderabad. But I think close to 35, 40 lectures I have delivered across the country. And uh, but here, listening to it is a total different uh, ball game. Yes, I have some things to share, but I'll share it later. Aram se to our Hyderabad people. But when you have legends like them, I am very small, and I am also a learner from all these people. And uh, and uh, one more thing, Pankaj Bhai, you will be shocked, and you might have understood by now. This is a unique team which is available. The moment I spoke to Ashwini ji to you know get all these people on floor, he could manage that entire uh, lessening and he ensured that he, I get connected to all these people and really I am humbled and really uh, you know excited also that I got connected with all these legends in the country and uh, you know we have such wonderful people uh, to uh, share their uh, you know uh, knowledge. Ashwini ji, you are like an elder brother and uh, you know, you have given a special love to me since the first time we met and till date and going forward also the blessing of an elder brother will continue and whenever my Hyderabad people are going to come or our uh, our own people, chartered accountants come, you are always going to be there to support them, help sir. them and guide them. Sir. So thank you very much, uh, Ashwini ji. Thank you, sir. It is all Ramit ji, thank you. You have been very good at keeping that thing. I was actually, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I, I'm very happy that at least uh, our recognition came a little bit. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you all, sir. The so, only thing which I was telling is basically when uh, people, uh, when Ashwini ji is speaking or anyone is speaking, let us actually uh, start our uh, speaker or anyone who is speaking, then only start the speaker. Otherwise, there is a lot of voice which comes uh, to the uh, you know, listeners. And these are all very important uh, questions which are there. Yes, sir. So, uh, first question uh, I am taking from uh, first day, that is question number 13. Uh, whether property which is transferred before 111 2016 but held after 111 2016, whether Benami law still applies to the property in the subject? Lakshmi Kant Rati Sahib has asked this question. In fact, uh, in this case, uh, if you remember, I had at great length at, on that day dealt with the concept of the word held. Now, because of this word held, without making it is retrospective, it is trying to create a retrospective effect. And now we have got three judgments. One judgment uh, from Honorable Chhattisgarh High Court, which says it has retrospective effect. And other two judgments, one from Niharka Jain, Raisan High Court, other from uh, Calcutta High Court, Ganesh Dilkom. Now, Ganesh Dilkom and Niharka Jain says it cannot be retrospective. Now, that judgment has been contested by the department against and SLP is pending. So, 
actually supreme court has to take on the decide this aspect but this held word when we read in the present context even if it is said to be not retrospective but this held word can create a problem this is a dicey issue but as on date in all the cases i mean the department is taking the view that if the property is held then it should be treated as benami if it is held after 111 2016 now even if property is transferred should transfer then also there is one section that is section 6 bracket 1 of pbpt act which says that any transfer of benami property retransfer of benami property should would be null and void so if that section is again invoked then again we back come back to square <laughs> zero square one so this is a very dicey issue ticklish issue which is has, which has a reason as on date all transactions are been covered unless supreme court comes into rescue then the next question is question number 17 uh, can ed confiscate benami assets and arrest the true owner prior to trial no sir benami asset is different thing and uh, assets involved under money laundering is totally different thing so ultimately ed only makes attachment of the property which are found to be involved in money laundering ed does not confiscate so ed makes attachment and thereafter if that asset is found to be involved in money laundering ultimately after the trial then the special court directs for the confiscation of the same even the adjudicator authority only confirms the attachment order and um, tribunal only upholds the order of the uh, adjudicator authority so it is a special court which directs and as far as benami property is concerned it is only attachment is done by the initiating officer then adjudicator authority confirms the attachment then pm and then the tribunal of benami law will also confirm the order of the uh, uh, adjudicator authority then only the fresh proceedings will be done by the adjudicator authority and in the fresh proceedings with regard to confiscation of the assets then the it will be decided whether the asset is to be confiscated or not so that is how the function goes then question number 18 and 19 uh, i will take them together because they are same uh, sorry 18 and 19 says yes is there any time limit as such for issue of show cause notice under benami law sir as i explained to you benami law has been made on a very very fantastic platform it is an unprecedented law as i said that day as i quoted shrimad bhagavad gita i will quote again the same uh, today also is samay anant hai na iska prarambh hai na ant hai so the time is eternal you see it has no beginning neither any beginning nor any end so they have made this act as a timeless duty so neither they have bound it with past time nor they have bound it with future time i am yet to say any such law income tax has law has some fetters even criminal law has some fetters with regard to time limits there is no time limit with regard to beginning of the case if it is a benami asset in the lifetime of the assessee after the lifetime of the assessee i mean assets can be attached that is the i mean the the scheme of the act the way it has been structured unless of course any competent court constitutional court reads down the law or put some reasonable limits into it then let me come back to question number 20 last question as far as benami is concerned is all money laundering benami yes very good question sir sir it is not that all money laundering is not benami uh because it depends ki if the assets which have been laundered or the property which are involved in money laundering whether they are retained in some other name if so then the another offense under pbpt act will also arise so it depends similarly a person doing benami transaction may have derived the property from offense of money laundering from commission of any scheduled offense so then it will be benami as per scheduled offense also so it depends upon the case benami property may not necessarily be derived from proceeds of crime but it is likely to happen that whenever money laundering is done then the chances are the person will be converting the property in some other names so that is how one thing leads to the other so sir that is all about the questions from first session then we can take up questions from session number 2 that is on pmla which we did but uh, honorable shri rn dash so i think i will be taking up the question and then if dash sir would like to add something on that then that can be done so the firstly question number 4 was there can pmla be invoked without conviction of scheduled offense under the scheduled offense will the uh, so this is a very big question in fact in in two three manner this question has been asked ki whether conviction is necessary then mohit ji has again asked the question ki okay even if not conviction but only if any acquisition is made merely on that pmla law can be invoked so in fact uh, this concept under pmla is very vague it the law entire law has been drafted in a highly vague manner but to the extent we can understand the law in the present form that will put before uh view subject to whatever additions uh, dash sab or uh, khemka sab would like to make now brother the way law has been made is something like that that as far as attachment part is concerned under pmla law 
it powers are given under section 5 and it is subject to the proviso 1 and proviso 2 now proviso 1 says that there has to be filing of an fir under section or under section 173 of crpc and only then attachment will be done but proviso 2 second proviso makes exception to that it says no in emergent cases it is quite possible that without filing any report any fir under section 173 of crpc still attachment can be done and there are all the procedure can be followed so this is with regard to that but in any in any in either case there has to be presence of some tangible evidence of commission of scheduled offense so they meaning thereby the authorized officer under uh, pmla that is a officer of the enforcement directorate should have reason to believe on the basis of some material that this so and so person has committed this uh, offense which is a scheduled offense and by commission of that offense so and so proceeds have been earned and from so and so proceeds earned that is how the offense of money laundering has taken place it is not necessarily it is not necessary that the person who is possessing the proceeds of crime should have himself or herself done the offense it may have been done by somebody else but commission of offense is necessary but hold on this is with regard to attachment attachment only what if straight away complaint is filed by the ed to the special court whether is there any requirement of there being any filing of scheduled offense under uh, under uh, under uh, any fir under scheduled offense to any court or to any other authority only then uh, ed can come into action in fact i would try to explain it with the help of an example which i and amit ji and sir had also discussed now so this is a question also which has been uh, later on asked by uh, uh, one of our participants that suppose gst bogus billing has been done and some fraud has been committed then how pmla action come into picture whether pmla can be invoked and if yes how after doing what exercise this is question number 20 which says sir can gst itc frauds attract pmla if so whether gst has right or property another question is sir bogus expenditure debited to profit and loss account and disallowed during scrutiny proceedings under income tax act any chance of revoking evoking pmla uh, provision so motto by the id this has been asked by ganesh balkrishnan ji and premnath degala ji and another question asked by shrinath bandaru ji so uh, dear friends actually this entire issue we would like to put forth before you before you in this manner that first of all there has to be commission of scheduled offense now tax evasion as such has not been made part of scheduled offense nor gst evasion or gst non compliance has been made part of scheduled offense list of scheduled offense. but while you see in the in this process a person may have done some other offense which is punishable under ipc for example forgery fraud and forgery which amit ji had explained at length during his deliberation so that kind of any offense has been committed which can be punishable under ipc for example fraud and forgery or cheating or conspiracy under section 120b or 420 or any such thing then it becomes scheduled offense so from that route an fir can be filed against a person and uh, then accordingly immediately after filing of fir ed can also come into action ed can file then ecir and then after filing ecir it can also file a complaint prosecution complaint under section 45 of mla and that is how the ed can swing into action so whatever proceeds are derived from such kind of evasion whatever <laughs> has been derived that will be treated as proceeds of crime and accordingly it will be dealt in pmla now the question arises which is still left to be answered is whether if no such exercise no such fir has been done whether straight away complaint can be filed before the court of law that is special court under pmla now there are two views possible on this and I, we will put both the views now one view says which uh, i hope dasa would endorse uh, that uh, ultimately uh, uh, pmla law is piggy backing on some other laws so there has to be first of all a conviction or a finding in other uh, by a court competent court with regard to any commission of any scheduled offense and on the basis of that pmla special court can take further decisions or actions now if any no such any report has been filed then pmla court will have to decide two things first of all it will have to decide that scheduled offense has been done and then it will have to decide 
that offense of money laundering has been done so amendment made under section 44 which has been uh, uh, also put up before us in today's questions by sri ajay kumar agarwal uh, probably is taking us into that direction so one of the reading is this but that reading is going to be upheld by the courts because in this case what will happen then ultimately the pmla court will be discharging two functions at a time which does not seem to be spirit of the law so probably amendment under section 44 uh, has been made from this angle that if any offense suppose uh, a, a trial of an offense is pending uh, scheduled offense is pending in the court but offense of money laundering can be independently tried then without waiting for that if it is not dependent in such a manner that it can be independently decided then without waiting for that the special court court special court can decide about about the offense of money laundering i do not think the idea is that even if no complaint has been filed upon, uh, about the uh, uh, scheduled offense the whole in the air offense of money laundering can be decided i don't think that should be the objective but uh, as i said the law is evolving and let us see what happens in this regard so that is regarding question number 20 and 21 sir uh, i think so it has uh, and uh, it has answered most of the questions because most of the questions are uh, revolving around this but one more question which i would like to answer that is with regard to cryptocurrency so question is will the use of cryptocurrency for money laundering be covered under pmla in the view that still this is not a legally acceptable currency now first of all some basics i would like to discuss about cryptocurrency virtual currency whatever you would say digital currency whatever you will say now uh, if you remember uh, as far as cryptocurrency is concerned the there was one uh, circular by rbi on 8th april 2018 that uh, whereby rbi said that no banking facility should be provided to any company who is dealing in cryptocurrency meaning thereby if a company is buying and selling cryptocurrency then no banking facility should be provided and banks should not allow these companies to open bank accounts with them meaning thereby there was no decision whether the dealing in cryptocurrency is legal it is a legal business one can buy or not or not without taking any decision rbi straight away issued this circular so that is why some of the companies dealing in cryptocurrency knocked at the door of honorable supreme court uh, like jappe and few other big companies so around nine points were raised before the honorable supreme court there now supreme court did not decide eight point in favor but decided only one point in favor of these persons and it was said that you no know, banking facilities cannot be cannot be denied to them so banks should allow opening of the bank accounts but despite that Uh, RBI did not come out with any circular ki whether they will allow nor these bank accounts will open to our knowledge so the things were kept pending like this then lok sabha bill was uh, also presented which was pending but today only dasher has shared one uh, news that uh, that it has been banned the cabinet has taken a decision that it will be banning dealing in any kind of cryptocurrency etc so friends as on date the scenario is very vague as on date uh, i mean though decision has not been taken but let us presume no decision has been taken but even otherwise how will somebody do uh, dealing cryptocurrency now if somebody does international trade that is not allowed because rbi will not allow it rp will go for approval rbi will not allow now if you do it here banks are not allowing the bank accounts so how would you do now in some of the cases the people who have done business they have been fallen into trap by economic offense wings like for example they have been roped in the allegations that they have done 120b they have been put with the violation of 420 and then fraud and forgery etc so many you know firs were filed and ultimately ed also came into action so as on date according to our understanding who sir will be dealing should be dealing at its risk ultimately he will have to face the action from ed also that is uh, with regard to uh now next question is uh, i think 13 question number 13 is uh, whether any violation has been done by under fema then whether pmla can attach those assets so uh, as far as uh, fema is concerned i think whatever violation is done under fema that will be under fema only for 
PMLA coming into action, there has to be scheduled offense, commission of scheduled offense. Only then PMLA department, that is ED, can come into action. FEMA is not as one of the scheduled offenses here. Yeah. Now, next question is question number 15. In case of a businessman during survey search by department declared undisclosed income and agreed to pay the taxes with penalties. If these agreed additions are used for the purpose of properties, again PMLA will be applied by the department. Since these are not declared in normal in returns, though taxes and penalties paid during search assessments by the income tax authorities. Please clarify. Friends, as I said, that uh, income tax evasion has not been made scheduled offense as such. So merely untaxed money will not become proceeds of crime unless the person doing the violation is also slapped upon him any violation uh, under forgery or fraud or 120B or 420. So untaxed money, mere untaxed money will not attract PMLA provisions. So therefore, even if undisclosed money is there, if he has paid taxes there or on surrenders, he can use that money for other purposes without bothering about PMLA department. Then, sir, uh, I think uh, I have uh, tried to cover up all the questions to the extent we can do. And uh, now we can take up questions from today or yesterday if uh, uh, these are there. Uh, so I think, uh, uh, Pankaj Bhai, if you can open up today's questions. Okay, I will open up and I will pass on to the respective uh, experts today. There are 26 questions which are there. Uh, yes, sir. yes, sir. I have opened. So uh, I think first question will be appropriately answered by Dr. Rakesh Gupta, if I may request him. Sir, if you could kindly open, all the experts may kindly open up question answer uh, box. So first question is asked by Sri Rama Rao, uh, Jamini, 5.57 PM. Need clarification okay. for disallowance under section 143.1A4, under section 43B, GST note paid come under disallowance since nothing debited to the profit and loss account relating to GST input and output. Is it adjustment is correct? Sir, uh, first let, uh, I mean, Swamil would be more appropriate than I will join. Okay, Swamil, please. Uh. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, GST not paid would be disallowable under section 43B and this adjustment if reported uh, in the audit report as seems to be a case of 143, 1A4. So this adjustment seems to be justified. Sir, Gupta, sir would like to add anything? <coughs> Dr. Gupta? Uh, if Dr. Gupta would like to add Swamil? anything? Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, the, the requisite of section 43B as per the plain reading of the section is that a deduction which is otherwise allowable. Therefore, the question comes whether any deduction can be said to be claimed even if it is not debited to the profit and loss account. Now, in respect of the excise duty or for that matter, the sales tax, in view of the Chorangi, Chorangi Sales Bureau's decision, even if these are not debited profit and loss account, then also, in respect of the method of accounting followed, they will constitute deemed receipt and deemed claim of expenditure. And therefore, if the GST, even if it's not finding itself to the debit or profit loss account, section 43B can be invoked. But on this issue, there are judicial decisions for and against of this proposition. So if uh, an SSC is embroiled into the litigation, then SSC can make out a case based on all those decisions that since it is not debited to the profit loss account and deduction otherwise allowable under this act, Section 43 to be invoked, and therefore 43 should not be invoked. So, you will have to file an appeal against that intimation under Section 143 and then we'll have to make out a case on these lines. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, next question is from Ajay Kumar Agarwalji. Evening, Somilji. Uh, can CIT appeal initiate penalty under Section 271 AAB? Search penalty for specified year four enhancement. Yes, Somil. Uh, 271 double AB, in case this is an enhancement which is covered under the definition of undisclosed income for the specified year, then the penalty can be levied at 271 double AB by assessing officer. The authority prescribed there is only assessing officer. An assessing officer has been defined in section 2, subsection 7A. 
So since CITP is not there, even if there is enhancement, it doesn't look like that he has the authority to levy penalty in 271 double AP. Yes, uh, I will add to it. I mean, these are the penalty provisions. And in the matter of assuming jurisdictions by the prescribed authorities, we have to construe these provisions very strictly. And therefore, if CIT appeal does not figure in the scheme of section 271 double AB as one of the prescribed authorities, then he is not competent. Even if even if he makes enhancement qua un undisclosed income that specified previous year, since he is not an authority envisaged in the scheme of section 271 double AB, he would not be in a position to impose penalty qua such enhanced amount of undisclosed income. Yes. Next, please. Yes, sir. Sir, next question is again from Ajay Kumar Agarwal ji, uh, our keen participant. Thank you, Ajay ji, for raising good questions. Uh, this is about uh, Black Money Act. Uh, yes. Regarding Section 8 of Black Money, undisclosed foreign income and assets and imposition of tax. Is there any time limit to call information production of evidences under Section 8 of Black Money Act to assesses or any other person? Yes, that's a very good question. In fact, Section 8 of the Black Money Act and Section 131 of the Income Tax Act are pari materia. If you remember under Section 131, the prescribed authorities who come to be mentioned in that section, now they have been given powers as are vested in the civil court while trying a suit in the matter of discovery and inspection, in the matter of enforcing the attendance of a person, in the matter of production of books of accounts and evidence, and in the matter of issuing commission. Now, in the Income Tax Act, under Section 149, if you remember, there are three time limits, four years, six years, and 16 years. The 16 years time limit is in respect of the undisclosed foreign income or income in relation to any uh, foreign asset. So, it can be taken in the context of interpreting Section 131 as if those authorities could have asked for information or could have exercised their power, which are vested the civil court in respect of the issues which have got bearing in respect of the determination of the total income for up to 16 years or six years as the case may be now in case of the black money act unfortunately there is no time limit and therefore it can be taken on the prime fsi reading of section 8 and on or and 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 strictly going by the letter of law rule of strict construction that these authorities i mean can ask information uh, or can exercise their powers which are vested in the civil court when trying a suit in the matter of discovery, in the matter of enforcement, in the matter of production of the evidences, uh, in respect of the time limit. But then, even if the even if there is no time limit prescribed under any section, then the settled law is that 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 uh, I mean you cannot be put uh, into a situation by asking information uh, for 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 some for some of those years i mean which are beyond the reasonable period of time therefore what can be the reasonable period of time would essentially depend upon the facts and circumstances of the case and the courts will have to take appropriate call in the given facts and circumstances but then going by the rule of literal construction of section 8 of the black money act there does not seem to be any time limit I mean, for which the information or the production or, or production of the witness or the documents can be asked. Yes, Ashwini. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, next question is from Venkat Ramana Murthy Palanki Sahab. And uh, Venkat ji is asking, sir, the company during financial year 2016 deducted tax but deposited late with interest as applicable. Total TDS for financial year 2016-17 was deposited by 30th April 2017, the directors of the company are issued notice under 276B. Apart from going for compounding, is there any option for the directors? Amitji, or who would like to answer? Uh, 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 insofar as my understanding goes, now yes. apart from going in for compounding, there does not seem to be any respite for the directors except that in case the prosecution is long, they will have to defend themselves at the court of law. Now, rest, uh, Amit ji can better tell. Amit ji, can you hear us? Hello, hello. Uh, yes, sir. sir the, uh, which question are you reading? I, I was, uh, I'm not able to 
टाइम टेल बी द टाइम दिस इज सर एट सेवन जीरो एट सेवन एट पी एम सेवन ओ एट सेवन पॉइंट जीरो एट ओके so in the mean you can read in the meantime let us go to the next question uh, yes whether amendment or clarification in respect of and in section 44 that i'll just yes sir sir this is at 7:30 pm whether the amendment or clarification in respect of and and in section 44 Sacrosanct with explanation three to section one forty seven, Renbaxi case and Jet Airways. Yes, I have, I have understood the question. Though there yes, is sir. some typographical error in mentioning forty four, probably the question of the querist friend is that whether with the introduction of explanation three to section one forty seven, whereby the assessing officer can examine even those issues during the course of reopened assessment. Which have got not, nothing to do with the reason recorded. And now, whether the decision of the Delhi High Court in Ranbaxi and the Bombay High Court in Jet Airways, whether they have become now uh, obsolete or uh, not applicable. Now, I think uh, my answer is that these decisions are still relevant, though that is a different matter. That the Karnataka High Court is uh, against this proposition, which has what has been considered as Delhi High Court in Ranbaxi and the Bombay High Court in Jet Airways. and rajasthan high court in shri ram singh's case in fact explanation 3 was brought to overcome all those decisions if you remember in 255 itr vipin khanna's case in which punjab and haryana high court has said that when the reassessment is done the jurisdiction of an assessing officer is confined only to make additions if at all he has to make addition in respect of the issues covered by the reason recorded now explanation 3 was brought in order to overcome i mean those decisions whereas the decision of jet airways by bombay high court and renbex by the delhi high court is only in respect of the things that if an assessing officer does not make addition in respect of the issue covered by the reason recorded whether he can make addition in respect of any other income which has also escaped assessment if you remember section 147 says that if an assessing officer has reason to believe that income chargeable to tax has escaped assessment then he can bring to tax such income to tax and also any other income which comes to his notice during the course of reassessment bombay high court or the delhi high court rajasthan high court they have interpreted their lots has interpreted the word also and their lots has said the word also indicates and presupposes that first of all that addition must have been made in respect of which the reason came to be recorded therefore the purpose and object of introduction of explanation 3 is not to nullify the decisions of the bombay high court in jet airways or delhi high court in renbex and the object was only to obliterate the decision of punjab and high court in the case of vipin khanna this is my reply yes sir thank you sir uh, next question uh, maybe amit ji may answer it uh, uh, properly that uh, this minute question has how the jurisdiction of high court is decided as trial case decided in special court is it based on place of crime or place of filing of complaint this is at 731 yeah yeah it is it, it is uh, of course the place of filing of the complaint okay next question is on black money act can yes. black money be imposed if money is sent through proper banking channel and due disclosure is made after 2012 from form fa has not been ticked no in fact uh, black money law is applicable in respect of the foreign sourced income and undisclosed asset located outside india now undisclosed foreign income which has been defined under section 212 read with section 4 is that foreign sourced income which has not been offered to tax in the income tax return filed within time under section 139 14 or 5 so or undisclosed foreign asset located outside india is an asset now the source of which is not explained so if the source of such foreign asset is not disclosed and even if it has been disclosed in fa schedule and the source is not disclosed mean meaning thereby that the source is not taxed then it remains undisclosed foreign asset so merely declaration in the schedule fa of an asset 
which has not been acquired out of the tax paid income now is not going to serve any purpose so merely so so mere, so merely bringing that asset into india i mean i mean you cannot say that the black money act would not be applicable it will be and disclosed foreign asset located outside india sir i think you have very well replied and i would like to add two more lines here in fact gone are the days when we used to show the compliance of the law without complying with the law probably now the time has come when we should give substance over form we should actually whatever the law wants we have to do otherwise uh, uh, <laughs> we will be you know falling into some other trap so uh, next question uh, dash sir if you could kindly help us in uh, analyzing yes sir tell me dilip kumar ji has asked this question that sir a company has borrowed funds from bank diverted yeah. funds to its associate concerns Mm -hmm. there is a malafide intention does it fall under pmla of course because the loan whenever there is a borrowed money there is an end use uh, that has been declared and not to going to not doing that and diverting it is a banking fraud and is a scheduled offense and uh, uh, in such case we will attract the money laundering offences rather uh, uh, i would add here most of the cases i think number wise if we see the majority number of cases which ed is having is those cases where defaults have been done by the borrower and then on such defaults after such defaults the banks has the banks have filed fir with cbi or uw alleging that the loan was obtained by fraudulent means or the diversion by was done by the borrower uh, uh, illegally so these kind of uh, uh, offenses these kind of violations uh, these kind of misdeeds are put categorized in the uh, list of scheduled offenses in one way or the other invoking either fraud or forgery 120b or 420 then uh, fir is filed and then ed comes into action and the entire loan amount in this process is treated as proceeds of crime not only the entire amount then wherever this trail goes wherever this loan amount has been utilized by the borrower uh, the accused borrower then all those person also come into trouble take the case of builders take the case of any such defaulters big defaulters whatever cases are there in the limelight are such only so i mean the situation is very grave in this area next question is again on income tax cpc passed order under section 1431 uh, that is central processing center and yes. sent the intimation only through email addition was made in the order on the basis of previously issued notice under section 1431 which to was sent by email both this was not accessed by the ssc the time limit for filing of appeal is over by 6 months what remedy is possible for the ssc anybody can answer please Yes. Somil, Somil would answer. So, uh, in this regard, Mr. Ji, I would say that uh, uh, even though time limit is over for filing the appeal, you can uh, uh, file appeal before CIT appeal against the 143-1 intimation and uh, further file an application for continuation of delay. Along with this, the other remedy I would suggest is filing a 154 against the intimation. and if the assessing officer rejects it you can file again appeal against the 154 order also but kindly note that uh, the argument that the it was not accessed by the ssc will not be sufficient to condone the delay we will need much, a bit more than that to condone the now uh, uh, there is one more limb of this argument uh, one more limb of this question now apart from filing of an appeal whether revision under section 264 can be filed may see or not yes 260 so in that situation if one is moved and then rejected then against that rejection 154 then you can you can go in for you can go in for uh, 264 yes ashwini actually this question was asked you rightly guessed it after some questions this question was asked yes you yes. already answered it hmm. Uh, Ajay ji has asked this question: Whether the CIT appeal can change, amend the erroneous section invoked by AO, that is under section 68, 69A, or vice versa? Is it enhancement under section 251? If he does so, whether the ITAT has this power, then this is the next. So three questions are there involved in this. Yes. 
Yes, Somil, would you like to answer or should I give? Yes, yeah, please go ahead. Uh, should I give answer? Yes, yes sir, please. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, uh, Ashwini, now power of CIT appeal is coterminous with the assessing officer. Now, if a assessing officer has quoted wrong section, then CIT appeal can very well correct it. And section 292 capital B is also there to take care of this kind of a situation. Though I am conscious that there are certain judicial decisions from the tribunal, and one decision which I remember is Jawaharlal Oswal, rendered by the Chandigarh bench, and one a very recent decision in the case of most probably Sweetie Kotari from Allahabad High Court, in which they have said that the tribunal cannot swap the section even between 68 and 69. And the case and the and the reasonings which have been given by the court is that the considerations for the application of these two sections are different, and therefore the tribunal, I mean, uh, cannot change the section. And that is what the Del the Allahabad High Court has said. Probably the name which I am remembering it starts with the word S, and it is reported in ITR. Most probably is Sweetie or some. I mean, the, 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 the Somil can help me to get it and it can forward it. But that Chandigarh bench decision that is that is 71 ITR at page 320. Which I do remember, and authored by uh, Mr. B. S. Saluja, as he then was a judicial member. So, I mean, you can take help of these two decisions. But insofar as CIT appeal is concerned, yes, he can very well do it. And, sir, we then also had the judgments, uh, benefit of the judgments, which were one of which was argued by you, like Miss Mayavati's case, uh, then there this issue was there, and then Bhai Chand Gandhi's case, the first case in this lineage. I think we can. Uh, Start reading the law from there. Yeah, then in Mayavati's case, yes, definitely this issue was there. But in case of Bhai Chand Gandhi, the issue was different. The issue was whether the passbook uh, is the books of account of an SSE or not. Yes, so, next. Accordingly, the connected question was whether the amount, if it is in the passbook, can it be added in the section 68? Because he added in the 1668. Whereas it could have been added under 69. So this issue started arising right from there, in fact. Yes. From Bhai Chand Gandhi 141 ITR, if I remember correctly. Yes, yes. Very right. Now this issue was okay. there. Then then this issue has come up in good number of decisions. But uh, I have seen the courts, though, should take a strict interpretation on the language of section 68, which says that when any sum is found created in the books of account of an SSE, so passbook cannot be said to be the books of an SSE. Passbook may well be anything, but cannot be the books of an SSE. And, uh, but, uh, uh, the, I mean, there are flip flop and both kinds of decisions, whether the court can change the section or cannot change the section that is there. Right. right. The next question is, uh, again, probably it is on BMA, not mentioning the name of BMA. Janki Ram Chattaji is asking this. What happens if NRI has not declared foreign assets? NRI. Yes. So non-resident Indians are not required to disclose their foreign assets. Eh? And if you see the definition of SSE given in the section 2, subsection 2 of the Black Money Act. Now, uh, I mean, that does not put any obligations on the non-resident Indian and Black Money Act is not applicable on non-resident Indian unless that asset in respect of which the proceeding has come to be initiated under this act. And that he was resident. So, he is non -resident. today he was non-resident the year. Your voice was broken in between. <coughs> Hello. Yes. Can you hear us? So, Rakesh sir ka bandwidth kam hai bolke bata raha hai jab baat kar rahe hain. Haan. Aapka voice ka diction bada achcha hai, wo bandwidth ka diction leh nahi pa raha hai. Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, to be dobara bolu kya mein? Last two lines. Yes. If a non-resident Indian is not an SSE and not an SSE under Black Money Act. If uh, he was non-resident in non-resident in that year also, in which under, uh, in which the foreign income or foreign asset was earned and acquired. Okay. okay. Next question is, sir, if money was sent from SSE's Indian bank account for acquiring equity shares of a foreign company, but uh. advertently 
not ticked schedule fa can make the investment as undisclosed asset outside india no if uh, he can be liable to pay penalty under section whatever is section 42 or 43 of the black money act to the extent of rupees 10 lakhs but uh, if the source of that income which was earned in india and out of which the foreign foreign asset was acquired if that income has been disclosed in the return and uh, may not be in fa schedule but in otherwise also and the taxes have been paid then there is no problem and if the ssc explains ki this was there was a reasonable cause that due to inadvertence this uh, asset could not be disclosed so there is there any scope of reasonable clause there in that penalty can be waived that on the same on the same pattern as we have 273b under income tax act uh, there is no such parallel provision of section 273b kind here under black money act but in any case we have got the provisions whereby before the levy of penalty a portunate of hearing will be given if you remember under section 274 subsection on the income tax act also there is a clear mandate that before the penalty is imposed a portunate hearing will be given and obviously when the hearing is given the reply is sent by an ssc and then the penalty levying authority i would would take into account that reply and in case the penalty levying authority finds that Uh, that uh, the contention of the ssc now is plausible then he may take but in so far as that 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 defense having been legislator on the lines of section 273b in bma is concerned it is not there so sir don't you think it is a lapse or uh, a miss on the part of the uh, legislature that at least this much precaution should have been taken that uh, any harshness uh, upon that Uh, if if we if, if we start speaking if we start speaking on the harshness in bma then probably i mean there will be i mean books which can be written on it yes. that day that day we were discussing it, we were discussing it, it has been purposefully made harsh because so for uh, the black money the extent of a black money starts away abroad Yes, that sir. was uh, the legislature has become purposefully harsh the government has purposefully made it that way so uh, i don't think they they probably omitted to do it no they did it that day i was discussing with dr gupta i was thinking earlier that law used to be made and it used to be enforced that was it, it is free from new sense so nowadays the laws yes. are leak proof that there are no possible uh -huh. leakages no possible loopholes but it is not ensured that it is nuisance proof also so yes left it upon the you know courts the court if misuse takes place any harsh actions takes place court will lead down but we must ensure that it is leakage proof let the harshness be there probably that is probably has happened in some of the laws and the courts will yes. have a greater role in uh, balancing in rationalizing these provisions uh, ashwini sir what has happened is many of the employees were uh, given esops in fact uh, several thousands of employees and in 2016 17 no one even why should we blame this is even the charter contents were not aware that we need to disclose this uh, foreign shares and now all those cases they are living penalty even though they are saying that uh, was everything is disclosed it's a perquisite taxed included in form 16 but still all those uh, notices have been given and they are hanging sir the penalty where they are leaving penalty under which law uh, bma bma non disclosure of yeah bma you know. only yeah non non disclosure in the form a foreign asset tax return no i today learned that even many uh, indian companies are facing action under fema also because some return is to be filed they forgot to file the return or they are facing penalty huge penalties under fema also whereas everything is disclosed everything is as per law so next question is from mr bitta venkat swami sir one of the company had not filed its income tax return for the financial year 2016 17 and 2017 18 then how the company can file the returns and what is the process to file is there any penalty proceedings if not filed Tomil. returns is there any problem will come in future tomil would sir, deal with it sir regarding the first year that is assessment that is financial year 16 tomil ji can you please bit louder can you please uh, bring the mic closer to you yes sir 
am i am i audible sir yes 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 so regarding the first year that is financial year 16 17 which is assessment year 17 18 the return cannot be filed there is no time limit left and uh, the consequences levy of penalty under section 271 capital f of rupees 5000 which can be levied in this case with respect to the other year that is financial year 17 18 that is assessment year 18 19 in this regard the uh, again the time limit for filing return is over there is no mechanism available to file the return unless the assessing officer issues notice under 148 or something and uh, for assessment year 18 19 and onwards fees under section 234 f would be levied of rupees uh, 10000 since uh, uh, return has not been filed till now so 10000 would be levied except in cases where the total income is less than uh, 5 lakh then 1000 fees would be levied at the max okay then yes. other part of the question is if not uh, is there any problem will come in future if not file the returns yes sir these penalty 271 f and 234 f fees would be levied in respective years yeah, apart from filing the return and there is a there is a The prosecution provision under section 276 double c also yes yes actually that is a problem which which should always hang on the for hanging on the head of a person known filing the return mm. then last question under income tax section there are questions left under pmla which i deliberately uh, skip for being because they were so this from our dear anonymous attendee and the question is ssc not responded to scrutiny notices and officer passed order under section 144 Can I ask you for an appeal against such order? So, Mel. Yeah, yes, sir. Appeal can be filed against the order. Submitted once uh, and to show the reasonable cause why he did not appear or did not respond to the scrutiny order. It is a. i am coming to one of the favorite questions of the day i think it will be favorite to all because the gold is going to be distributed now the question is uh, anand sharma ji is asking this question few days ago ed has brought 2300 kilograms of polished diamonds worth 1350 crores to india belonging to nirav modi and mehul choksi will this be distributed to lenders if yes who will have the first claim Num number 1 number 2 do ed public appropriate authority will need to convert this into cash by auction etc before distribution number 3 how these items uh, dasher and amit sir please open this question it is at 6 pm number 3 yes how yes yes diamonds yes. antique paintings are valued and distributed because the prices for these have different value in different markets for mm -hmm. can the lenders challenge it court of for the first claim sir who will begin kimka sir or dasher Okay. In fact, I uh, spoke about this day before yesterday in my overview that yeah. uh, this uh, these things were like in Hong Kong in a courier company's godown, and uh, because of the effic uh, efficiency of our ED, this has been brought back. And now coming to the question. Uh, section eight of a PMLA deals with confiscation. Section nine deals with vesting in central government. Section ten deals with the management. Then there is a prevention of a money laundering, restoration of a confiscated property rules, two zero one six that deals with the claims of a. victims so that rules provide that uh, if the amount confiscated is not adequate to meet all claims then proportionately it will be distributed evenly by amongst all there is no first claim there is no second claim and it will be decided by the special court and after the confiscation proceeding takes place so imagine only when this matter reaches conclusion irabodi matter reaches conclusion maybe in 10 years uh, in the special court and confiscated 
then the special court judge will publish notice in two newspapers one english one vernacular giving 30 days notice to all these people who have the claims to file their claims in case some people are delayed they can it can be condoned by another 30 days only not beyond and once those claims come the special court will decide about the claims admissibility and distributed uh, amit ji would like to add anything i think uh, beautifully uh, uh, answered by das sir there is uh... one thing i would like to say here but sir the situation which we are facing nowadays is for example in bank default cases also the banker the borrower says ki okay i am ready to pay back kindly release the attachment then the ed's reply will comes or this is tainted property once the special court will decide the matter only thereafter if it is not confiscated only then we will see otherwise now this has become property of the government even banker will not get it back so whether same kind of situation will it not arise there also how the ed will allow anybody to touch this property because they will say this is tainted property nobody can touch it it is the right of on this property is only of the government so how shall we as here sir whether different kind of uh, approach will be done by ed this time no ed will not be probably do ed will not do anything about it it does not have the power only the special court has the power yes sir okay so let's go to next question next question is from ajay kumar ji again ajay kumar ji has quite exhaustively asked all all the parts of the questions are very good but ajay ji these questions in fact we covered up in our deliberations under pmla but for the sake of benefit we will quickly revise that for example what is the sop for enforcement investigation procedure etc as we shared that day that investigations are done and from the investigation agency any report comes and on the basis of such reports then investigation comes into action then it can start its action by making either summoning a actually ji actually ji uh, ajay agarwal sahab has uh, too many questions yes sir so i will request uh, pankaj bhai to kindly forward these questions to us and uh, we will write answers and those can be circulated later on yes sir i, I, I will do that sir i'll do that yeah so i we will just uh, for the moment uh, these questions by ajay agarwal sir uh, we will just skip and we will just send you the answers which you can circulate among the member yes sir sure so, sir अगेंस्ट ओपन कोर्ट system though virtual court has advantages in saving time energy and money does it hinder in sharing the documents convincing the judge addressing the arguments as a lawyer do you feel it would be it would make a difference if you argue a case via virtual court room uh, anand sir uh, we are we people are habitual of uh, you know uh, uh, we actually relish the court uh, environment when we are in the court uh, after as i always say that after we argue we look back we don't look at the judge we look at the audience behind us so of course that enjoyment uh, is missing but uh, i argued few cases uh, through the virtual court abhi right now in delhi we are only having hearings in virtual court so i argued certain matters and uh, i found that there were certain plus points also because most of the judges are have come well read for one uh, there is hardly any wastage of time the other counsel is not interfering you know he is not interjecting or he is not disturbing you because his mic has been muted by the court master so uh, those are the advantages also 
but yeah like you are right that uh, suppose the judge is not convinced then in the court room uh, we keep on repeating our argument or repeating our submissions you know we are able to uh, th those tactics which we employ in the court room we may not be able to do it in the virtual court then another problem is with the trials you know the trials have not been uh, there is we are yet to find a way to how uh, the trial can be conducted because the documents have to be brought in the witness uh, suppose the witness has giving a statement through virtual mode there could be someone prompting him from behind uh, which uh, one will never know that that witness is being prompted so cross examination is almost virtually impossible to have uh, through virtual mode and without the cross examination you cannot think of trials yes i i was talking to one of the judges in high court a uh, few days back so i told him that why are you not finishing your uh, uh, pending uh, hearing matters after all there are thousands of matters which are pending uh, for hearing i mean the pendency in most high courts and courts are 10 years 12 years 15 years so why can't they finish off those matters at least during this lockdown period they can be very easily finished during uh, by way of virtual modes and in our i court they have said that you in advance give a 15 minutes video recording of your argument which the judge will come after seeing so your virtual session will be decreased to maximum 10 to 15 20 minutes one can send the arguments virtually by in a recorded form okay sir thank you and uh, may I take this as last question uh, we, we begin with benami and can we end with benami and uh, i think this can be answered very appropriately by ras sir because we have detailed discussion with ras sir on various concepts of where interplay between income tax and benami takes place so ras sir gives very good guidance dr raj agarwal uh, sir this is question at 641 pm the question is how is benami income taxed especially when benami dar was taxed by the assessing officer after giving an opportunity in in, in fact uh, ashni As so far as the consequences under the income tax are concerned, and the consequences under the Benami Act are concerned, these are two these can have two different offences, which can take simultaneously, and at the same time it is not necessary. If action is taken at uh, one act, it would be it would be taken at the other act also. If uh, the income Is undisclosed, on which tax has not been paid, either by the benamida or by the beneficiary, whosoever it may be. The income tax action may take place, but benami act will come into play when there are two parties. One is beneficiary, one is benamida, and what are the ingredients of the benami act are there? Those are being uh, uh, fulfilled. So, so therefore, uh, there can be a situation. for example i can give uh, just an example that uh, if uh, there is a benami property which has been taken in the name of some other person but it has been taken through banking channels by the disclosed asset uh, income then no action under the income tax act uh, may be there but if that property has been acquired out of the undisclosed uh, income then there can be action under both the acts so therefore the purpose and the offense under both the acts is different and there can be different actions uh, depending upon the facts under both the acts or maybe under one act i think very beautifully and aptly summarized by ras sir uh, for what he is known for i would also say that you know the action can be mutually exclusive and the action can be cumulative also depending upon the facts <laughs> now one very important question i want to raise and put to uh, sunil sir sri sunil saha shaha from mumbai sir you have been uh, handling many representing in many cases such is have taken place now during this covid period certain investigations are pending so what is your experience how the department is doing i mean still they are calling and summoning people or they are hushing up with their uh, material number one number 2 in coming time do you see still many searches going on despite covid period because still there are many reports which 
has been received by the government that many people have evaded their taxes and stashed huge assets and money etc so i what will be your view sir what would like to say sir as far as income tax is concerned no notices are being received by us but from ed we have been continuously receiving notices even during this period by a number of our clients they have been sent notices by ed and they have been even asked to appear in person though they have refused to appear before them but no such action is being taken by the income tax department they are not calling anyone in fact in one of the cases i recently uh, met one of the pcit and uh, he told me informally also they have been instructed not to enforce attendance of anyone during any of these uh, search proceedings or otherwise also they have been instructed not to ensure presence of anyone by using any method coercive or persuasive both the things have been now as far as income tax is concerned it has been put on the back burner so does sir can this compassionate approach be not adopted vis a vis enforcement directed work also the same compassionate approach has been has been directed to the investigation wing of the income tax department and do you see any no <laughs> yes sir but it is not a compassionate it is not a compassionate it uh, when there is a possibility of a money laundering offense and the assets in quick action is not taken that assets are likely to be transferred dissipated or further layered so it is responsibilities are more onerous and required quick action is always required and not like income tax income tax is they find out that they uh, didn't want to they find out it is not going to go away somehow it is they have uh, we we do classic investigation there it is it is here timely action is necessary both are on a different planes so and as i had earlier spoken about somehow covid time night and times is times when money laundering is at its peak not only in india but the world over yes that's so, right so that being the case even the president in his address to all nations has warned them that this is happening and be careful that being so ed has to be alert and ed has to take action right. so that's it daya sir would you like to add something to the beautiful uh, you know discussions which were going on uh, without you uh, sir, i was listening to the entire thing and i was still thinking that i am too young to be part of this discussion <laughs> but i was happily listening to the entire deliberation sir i think uh, you know the 10 chapters only 10 chapters are there in our entire pmla and uh, as you rightly said the piggy banking which is being done uh, piggy banking which is being done by various laws if you allow me i'll just share one slide which i generally speak on which will be for benefit of members. you are not audible uh, i think i have been muted by pankaj bhai no no you are you are audible now you are audible yeah, i okay. cannot bear that there bhai are are sir sir nahi nahi what i was saying is as you rightly said uh, ashwini sir the entire pmla primarily which is piggy banking or all laws uh, and uh, the 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 interesting part i would like to share one of my slides when i speak in public uh, if you allow me to just share one slide uh, this will be something very interesting for people to know how this law is been designed differently when compared to uh, you know various uh, statutes and regulations which are there just i am taking my slide with your permission please please i think you are able to see the yes yes, yes yeah so i'll just uh, if we see this uh, entire i have a different uh, approach for uh, discussion uh, though uh, this is something which i would like to tell our uh, members to really understand how this law is all about if you see uh, ashwini sir i think uh, the section 1 and 2 ke baad seedha uh, the chapter 2 totally we have 75 section in this law 
and this act has been so well uh, you know impl- uh, you know um, implemented rather there are a lot of issues which are there but as uh, dash sir rightly said lot of money is gone out of this country and uh, you know this this law has to be a little open as well as tight also with regards to lot of things so if you see this is the f- first law which i saw in my lifetime where uh, you know the law starts with offenses and punishments and then accordingly the entire uh, you know discussion goes on so ek second ek second ek second so i'm sorry my kid is uh, just playing around <laughs> so uh if you see this entire act which is there in the 75 section and the way that has been drafted and the entire influence which is been done from uh, you know uh, 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 cpc and everywhere this is something which is unimaginable and the way i think uh, the entire group has actually uh, discussed this uh, chapters are uh, this unimaginable matlab i was learning a lot in the entire process by linking the income tax act uh, pmla benami and the kind of procedures provisions which are there you know aap sab logon ko mera sadar sadar pranam hai sir you are all amazing and there is lot to learn from all you people so i don't have much to say i'll not say anything but uh, i just wanted to show that slide because that is one of my interesting slide in uh, pmla when i discuss i discuss that slide for a quite a long time so i thought it is going to be interesting for our members also so uh, ashwini sir uh, one thing i would like to say i am really blessed to be connected with you and all the uh, people in, including amit ji das saab uh, raj ji uh, sunil ji and rakesh ji all people have been a great support and i have been interacting with you on a continuous basis and this law which is going to be one of the most important future for our profession i think if people start thinking about moving away from income tax act or income uh, you know gst audits and uh, statutory audit and law audit there is lot and lot which need to be done and there are very few people in this particular sector if they think about creating a, a you know career in this i don't think any in hyderabad there are many people who are actually practicing this entire law and every state today has lot of impact which is there when the government change when the situation change when the circumstances change everything gets an impact so primarily uh, you know the reason uh, when pankaj bhai and i discussed about this particular series after your suggestion uh, what pankaj bhai also suggested is you know the best part is if the senior people come and give a direction to our uh, you know fraternity might be certain places we do it without intention with the intentions are not there it is by mistake certain things happen as you rightly said in fema some compliances have been badly missed out not because of uh, you know intention it is basically because the ignorance was there unfortunately the statement goes very simple that ignorance of law cannot be an excuse but the fact is you know the kind of knowledge which need to be put into one particular repository in india also it is missing out badly so how many laws and how many uh, you know provisions you can actually comply with uh, today in the new code of ethics also we have got uh, you know no clar where primarily you need to look into all the compliance of laws and uh, regulations humanly in india it is not possible for us to look into all these aspect honestly i am telling you and these laws where uh, today amit ji has very nicely taken through the entire penalties and prosecution if you actually go back in companies act 2013 uh 25% of the sections are only telling you about the penalties and prosecutions everywhere 25% of the sections i have did one presentation penalties and prosecutions under companies act so if you see all these parts sir i think uh, you know our members have to be little careful with regards to the compliance of law today that is not a situation where we can be uh, you know master in one and we can sign everything you need to actually collaborate and ensure that you know we either if you don't have a partner within the firm you should actually think about collaborating with external people who are independent so the risk of if a person feels that there is a risk of losing client uh, you know uh, that also will not be there so this uh, you know platform today what we have created pankaj bhai thanks to you you agreed to get this entire uh, you know galaxy of stars on one floor from different cities and most importantly different areas and the best part is i think these four things which have been discussed are impeccable i think you go back and search all the requ- i request all the attendees also you go back and search in the country this kind of continued link by link provision is not at all been discussed this is just the beginning we thought might be let us experiment and thankfully ashwini ji agreed 
that you know daya ji let us do it and we'll make it happen and i was a little worried but he gave me that motivation thank you ashwini ji for uh, having this love and affection uh, primarily i don't have much to say on the subject i can only learn from you people on a continuous basis you are at least 10 years 20 years 30 years ahead of me so humko wahan tak pahunchne ke liye bhi bahut time hai sir हमको हम तो आप लोगों का हम तो आपके कदमों के चिन्ह पर चलने वाले लोग हैं एंड वील डू इट आई थैंक यू यू नो बाय फ्रॉम बॉटम ऑफ माय हार्ट दैट यू ऑल लेजेंड्स हैव कम टुगेदर टू कम शेयर दिस काइंड ऑफ यू नो नॉलेज विद आवर मेंबर्स आई थिंक इवन वन मेंबर इज गोइंग टू गेट बेनिफिटेड आउट ऑफ दिस लेक्चर्स आई थिंक यू नो यूर नॉलेज विच इज बीन डिसमिनेटेड Well, that one person blessing will only be a make a whole lot of difference so with this i thank you all again and uh, over to you pankaj bhai pankaj bhai i have a request pankaj ah. bhai i have a request that uh, even those questions which we have answered the questions which have not been answered and the questions which we have answered please send us all the questions yes sir i, I will i'll just uh, collate it tomorrow and i'll send all the questions to all the people sir correct and uh, there no. by mera accept karna aap waisi ke ek bacche ko chocolate bataya aur wo nahi bolna uh, ye wahi example hota hai to bachcha to chocolate ke taraf lapke ye acha dialogue maar diya aaj not be uh, better than so i'll also it's almost 8:30 so uh, from bottom of my heart and on behalf of every member of the yeah, branch yes sir टास्क that you have to devote so much of time but for a central council member to remain of uh, in eight ten committees and then uh, to cater to the all uh, i mean charge accountants and voters uh, of course uh, from the uh, that point of view it is a really marvelous <coughs> job and you are not jack of all rather you are master of all <laughs> that is the situation which uh, is there so we, we we salute your energy and uh, your participation and uh, our association really we will uh, we relish it and secondly one thing i was just uh, wondering that as a tax professional i always uh, wonder what kind of uh, service uh, uh, to the nation building we are providing as a professional satisfaction as a personal career we are doing but sometimes i feel are we contributing for the nation building uh, when uh, we are providing the tax consultancy so so uh, my my i mean if i go deep into the uh, question then i feel that we provide peace peace to the uh, uh, businessmen who have are being uh, put into problem by the regulators authorities uh, unnecessarily due to misuse or misapplication of the law and uh, the extent which was there in income tax law now in all these other economic offences laws benami act ed pmla and all these acts this nuisance is much high much larger 10 times 20 times or even that, more than that so if we can provide uh, i mean we can expand our horizon and we can provide all this these services along with the, the commitment to provide peace to the genuine persons so that they can do the business productively and efficiently probably this is also a national service this is what i derive Uh, i mean uh, being uh, the objective of the professional service for nation building so from that point of view we all are now together so i think uh, we can uh, go ahead uh, with the, this kind of spirit so raji do uh, please sir hai. only a happy citizen should make happy country so when uh, only a peaceful citizen can be happy and a happy citizen can make the country better uh, yes, thank you very much bhai. पंकज भाई दो ही पॉइंट बोलना है राज जी को एक तो दस कमेटी नहीं है मेरे पास गलती से ट्वेंटी नाइन कमेटी में मैं मेंबर हूँ <laughs> और उसमें क्या है सीखने के लिए बहुत मिलता है सो आई पार्टिसिपेट वेर एवर पॉसिबल एंड नंबर टू जब अपने से आदमी मायूस हो जाता है चार्टेड अकाउंटेंट अगर उसको मैनेज नहीं कर सकता या एडवोकेट मैनेज नहीं कर सकता उसके बाद वो डॉक्टर के पास जाता है 
so we are yes uh, we, we we should not allow him to go to a doctor we should help him out wherever possible yes thank you sir. thank you devan we have to to add to what rasta said you know some great man has said that if you want peace go for justice you know so uh, justice actually is the one of the main instruments so he is that he is that great man who has said that <laughs> thank you thank you sir uh, i'll just take it so on behalf of the hyderabad branch of src of ica and every member who attended the seminar uh, this uh, webinar in the last four days uh, i from the bottom of my heart i thank sri ashwini tarneja ji sri arandas ji sri rakesh gupta ji aaj sri amit demka ji sunil sha ji for being with us raj agarwal and sumil agarwal the father and son ji i believe uh, okay and i also thank ajay agarwal for asking so many questions for today uh, as well as all the members who took part with us i sincerely pray god that this covid is lifted soon and at least during my chairmanship i have all of you in hyderabad on one day which will be the greatest day for hyderabad so thank you very much sir thank you very much i will forward the questions and everything thank you sir thank you thank you and ajay ajay agarwal ji can call me directly because some of the questions were so lengthy we could not uh, uh, answer all of them my apologies so you can please call me directly in the chat box dr gupta has given my number thank you very much namaskar thank you pankaj bhai yeah namaskar thank you thank you amit ji thank you guys sir thank you ashwin bhai thank, thank you raj and samil raj bhai samil bhai thank you thank you thank you thank you pankaj bhai ha mai ruk to mere ha ek baar ruk jana देख भाई अभी पैनलिस्ट में तो अपन दोनों ही है क्या हुआ चैट निकालने नहीं आ रहा मेरे को पुराना तो आई थिंक आज तो मैं सब जितने लोग चैट में मेंबरशिप नंबर डाले मैं बाजू एक्सेल में लिख लिया आप लिखे भाई को वहां पे डाउनलोड होता पंकज भाई हर चैट डाउनलोड नहीं हो रहा पुराना इसलिए मैं आज रुक जा रहा हूँ आई थिंक आफ्टर ऑल द अटेंडीज गो एंड आई विल वेट फॉर अनदर फोर्टी फाइव मिनट आर सो and if i see i can download the chat because for yesterday and day before i was ane rakesh ji wanted the chat but unfortunately is unable to download the chat aisa hona nahi chahiye pankaj bhai abhi dekh lenge ek baar ha abhi dekho na kaisa bhi and meanwhile i had humbly request all the attendees to end the meeting and go because only after you go i will try to play with the uh, zoom and i'll try to back up and thank you very much for being with us thank I, you i think uh, pankaj bhai overall also they spoke very well i think it was fantastic it was, i think excellent uh, excellent matlab unko sara sabko pakad ke leke aana it's a challenge pankaj bhai logon ko ek sath apan leke aake bhai wo aap ke liye kya kare bhai ye speakers ko dena mere mere out of syllabus question hai mere liye are nahi 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 aap usko baki moderate kar le jab ki aaj mera tabiyat bhi kharab tha kal bhi kharab tha aap you are able to manage that's more than important hum pakad bhai apna to team work hai apne liye pura apna branch bhi pura ka pura saath deta they don't uh, interfere or they don't uh, create any kind of uh, this thing fine so chalo dekhenge पंकज भाई वो आप एक काम करो यहाँ पे जाके आप उसमें जाओ ना एंड मीटिंग करना पड़ता एंड मीटिंग करे तो मेरे को आप एक बार एक काम करो मैं हाँ। होस्ट के ऐसा रुके से रहता हूँ हाँ। क्या करो इधर जाओ आपको मैं को होस्ट कर देता हूँ नहीं नहीं मेरे ख्याल से पंकज भाई इसमें है ना अपने को दोनों को ही मीटिंग क्लोज करना पड़ेगा क्लोज करने के बाद ये क्वेश्चन आंसर उसके अंदर पड़े रहते क्वेश्चन आंसर्स निकल गए अटेंडेंस निकल गया चैट भी है ना अपन लास्ट टाइम निकाले ना पूरा लास्ट टाइम निकाले ना वेबिनार में कल चैट नहीं मिला मेरे को माय को बिकॉज़ राकेश सर वांटेड माय कल रात में 11:30 बजे तक ढूंढा इनफैक्ट मैं क्वेरी भी डाला उसको हाउ टू रिट्रीव द चैट बोल के लेकिन वो जवाब नहीं आया तो इसलिए मैं थोड़ा डर रहा हूं एंड मीटिंग करने के लिए तो इसलिए मैं आपको कोहोस्ट बना रहा हूं ओके okay. के लिए क्या करो बोलते हो आप क्या करो एक बार वहां जाके 
जस्ट आप होना है तो फिर वेबिनार में जाओ ना एस्केप करके न्यू मीटिंग में एक एक सेकंड पंकज भाई मैं जा रहा हूँ वहां पे साइन इन आप रहन दो ऐसी एक मिनट रहन दो मैं जा रहा हूँ लॉगिंग इन पूरा ठीक है ना लॉग इन करके न्यू मीट न्यू तो वेबिनार में जाके देखो आप नीचे अकाउंट मैनेजमेंट ट्यूटोरियल एडवांस ये लेकिन सबसे अच्छा है पंकज भाई ये एक्चुअली देखने का तो लोग चुप इसको बदनाम कर दिए बस बहुत अच्छा है बस खाली एक ही प्रॉब्लम हुआ आज ये नहीं मिला बस और नहीं तो बहुत अच्छा है इसके नाम से नहीं मिल रहा है अपन लास्ट टाइम करे थे इसके अंदर मैं भी वही और कॉन्फिडेंट था लास्ट टाइम करे बोल के ये लाइव स्ट्रीमिंग नहीं करा रहे क्या पंकज भाई अपन इसको लाइव स्ट्रीमिंग कर देना इसको एक सेकंड मैं रिकॉर्डिंग बंद करता हूँ हाँ हाँ